Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. In, in, in managing the decisions on which projects to to invest in because I'm very fortunate. My deal flow is insane. I see everything. Mm -hmm. And I have to disclose, I'm a paid spokesperson to, uh, to FTX and a shareholder there too. We... I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to agree. It was a terrible investment, 100%, and I lost my money. I get it. You raised eyebrows a few months ago in a Bloomberg interview in which you described crypto yields, and some read into your description as resembling a Ponzi scheme. He used his Ponzi token as collateral to borrow billions of real dollars that he couldn't pay back. He then used those real dollars to build an empire out of dying companies like Voyager and BlockFi. This led Jim Cramer to call him the new JP Morgan. That's weird, it's not like Jim Cramer to promote a billionaire con artist. SBF sold people cryptos like Bitcoin, or so they thought. What they really bought from SBF was an IOU. But as long as everyone didn't cash in their IOU at the same time, the scheme worked. Until it didn't. This other a-hole who hates SBF came along and engineered a bank run with some passive-aggressive tweaks. It worked. SBF didn't have enough money to repay everyone at once, and now his customers have lost everything. He'll be happy to know that this is exactly how every bank in the world operates. But where did all the money go? He misappropriated $4 billion trying to save his failing hedge fund. Whoops, that's a felony. He spent $21 million on Super Bowl commercials, $5 million for the big guy, $40 million in campaign donations, and wonder what he wanted in return. I, uh, you know, to get funds both to the, the government there where we do have a relationship with the Ukrainian government um, for raising capital um, for them using cryptocurrencies um, that, that runs through FTX, um, you know, whether it's getting money to the government or whether it's getting money um, to individuals there in need. Um, you get a chance to check out Jordan Satchel on Twitter. He links to his substack called The Dossier, and he writes fairly extensively about the FTX collapse. In the recent message, since I get this question a lot, folks Ukraine did not invest in FTX. FTX was set up in a way to donate to the Ukrainian central bank. They were soliciting customer crypto token donations and exchanging them for FIA. There was no investment from Kyiv. How much of that money ended up in the stated destination? Nobody really knows. But the mechanism they set up was advertised to exchange the tokens for FIA and send it to Ukraine Central Bank. FTX was supporting the current thing and trying to impress. It's worth noting, Sequoia is a major investment firm that worked with FTX. And they wrote this rather glowing article about the founder. Apparently quite recently, September 22nd, 2022, this article has since been deleted, but can currently be found on the Wayback Machine. Keep in mind, it is possible to delete entries off the Wayback Machine, as I detailed previously. So you want to uh, perhaps keep a copy of the article for future posterity. In one of Jordan's recent substacks, we learn a bit about SBS ties to EA, that is effective altruism. An interesting passage I'd like to read to you. To quickly summarize a real view of the intellectuals who coined effective altruism to continue to disseminate its ideas through Silicon Valley and the Ivy League Oxbridge academic world, effective altruism can best be understood as a version of progressive utilitarianism. Effective altruists want to do good, they claim, but they can't develop a consensus on what exactly is good, only that they want to do good. Again, effective altruist advocates are 
almost uniformly state as progressives, so they generally tend to lean strongly into authoritarian governance principles. And through earning to give, we get more clarity on the mission of dedicated effective altruists. Effective altruism advocates believe that free markets will not produce human flourishing. In fact, most would consider free markets as a detrimental force in society. However, unlike somewhat ideologically aligned socialists and communists, effective altruists also accept the notion that free markets are an ideal means of wealth creation. Therefore, with the effective altruists taking advantage of market-based systems to accumulate enormous sums of wealth is an acceptable pursuit because the altruistic end game of earning to give justify the means of engaging in a supposedly objectionable system. It's worthy of to note that the current Twitter CEO, Elon Musk, is engaging in appropriate information warfare on his own platform, really with the goal of further expanding upon some of the scams and schemes that we've all been exposed to. Sam Bakeman frieds fraudulent FTX got a higher ESG score on the leadership and governments than ExxonMobil. ESG ratings are all a fraud, states Wall Street Silver, to which Elon agrees. Tom Fitton states that while Biden gang has been harassing and threatening Elon Musk and his companies, one of the worst scams in modern finance is being perpetrated under the nose by regular White House Hill visitor and the second biggest Democrat donor. And Elon puts an emoticon there and then responds to this article that covers Sam Bankman frieds fall and how it will remove a major source of funding for the U.S. Democrat Party. CZ produced this fateful tweet on Elon's platform that ultimately led to the initial shock of scared investors pulling out of FTX and then to FTX's collapse. What connections does CZ have to Elon or other interested parties trying to stop our march towards authoritarianism? Perhaps we should figure out more who this guy is.